This is an audio description of the full body armour made between 1587 and 1589 for Sir Thomas Sackville, Lord Buckhurst, in England. This magnificent complete English armour is the only example of its kind in the Wallace collection. It was made in the Royal Armourer's Workshop founded by Henry VIII at his palace at Greenwich in 1514. In the reign of Queen Mary and Queen Elizabeth, Licences were granted for the armoury to produce armour for their friends and supporters as special privileges. One such licensee was Lord Buckhurst, who was in command of cavalry forces defending the south coast of England. He may have commissioned the armour in anticipation of the invasion of the Spanish Armada in 1588, intended for battle, rather than display in jousts and tournaments. It was supplied with a small number of interchangeable pieces that could be used to configure the armour for light, medium and heavy cavalry combat. Constructed from steel, the armour would originally have been a deep blue purple. This colour was achieved through careful heating until the metal changed colour, a procedure known as bluing. The steel is now a dark grey, but on close inspection some evidence of the heating process remains visible. The structure of the armour follows the form of the Elizabethan gentleman's fashionable civilian dress. Etched and gilded strap work imitating richly embroidered ribbon, decorates a surface and emphasises its sculptural qualities. The helmet consists of two sections. The helm, resembling a hood and the face guard known as a buff. The helm closely fits the contours of the head and flares out at the base to protect the back and sides of the neck. Level with the eyebrows is a protruding section similar to the peak of a cap. A space is left for the face, that is wide across the eyebrows and follows the downward curve of the cheeks. The buff projects outwards, like the prow of a ship. It fits over the face and extends at the bottom to form a guard around the front of the neck. When the buff is joined to the helm, a narrow viewing aperture remains. To provide protection for the eyes, a thin, twisted piece of steel attached to the buff runs horizontally across the aperture, forming a barred slit. The two parts of the helmet are fastened on either side of the head by hinged brackets and clasps. The head is given additional protection by the strengthening properties of the comb, a raised narrow keel-shaped section that runs from the centre of the forehead to the back of the head. At approximately 32 kilograms, the armour is extremely heavy. It is, however, fully articulated to provide as full a range of movement as possible through the intricate engineering of narrow, overlapping plates. The most notable jointed sections are pauldrums, shaped to protect the shoulders, tassets, the lower trunk and thighs and cuirasses, the front of the legs. Two curved plates are bolted together to form an elaborate guard that encircles each elbow. The gauntlets are fashioned from small plates, allowing delicate movement in the fingers and thumbs. In contrast, such pieces as the greaves that enclose and closely fit the lower legs and embraces, protection for the forearms, are rigid sleeve-like structures. The tassets are attached to the front of the breastplate, and the cuirasses are secured to the leg with leather straps and buckles. The breastplate imitates a fashionable clothing style of the time, in the exaggerated form of the peas cod doublet. The shape curves outwards at the front, culminating at the groin where it tapers to a small horn-like protrusion. The tassets emulate the design of the small, rounded trunk hose and the broad shape of the jointed sabatons, the bare poor shoes seen in contemporary portraits. On the upper right side of the breastplate, there is a bracket to support the lance and brace it against the shock of impact. Each overlapping plate is edged with finely patterned gilded stripes and fastened together with small gold rivets. The most elaborate strapwork decoration on the surface of the armour consists of bands with the design of flowing, interlaced lines, bisected by a finely wrought zigzag, enclosed by a narrow border. The gold of the design stands out in contrast to a dark grey background. A vertical band travels from the groin to the top of the breastplate, the continuing sections upwards across the comb to the back of the head and down to the base of the backplate. Two diagonal stripes from groin to shoulder further emphasise the peas cut shape of the breastplate. This configuration is repeated on the backplate. Symmetrically spaced, these strapwork bands also accentuate the appearance of the length of the leg and the sculptural qualities of tassets, 
pauldrums and helmet. A further decoration in the form of a gilded serpentine line is prominent around the edges of the pauldrums and the plates of the elbow defences. This armour is a perfect combination of technical brilliance and aesthetic sophistication, confirming the wearer's status as a formidable opponent in battle. Thank you.